Yo, 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 game the games the Ronios. Now we are going to create RL because we have all of our ingredients. Well, of course, we need to create some more, but we can create a level right now. Now, before we do that, what you're going to do here in the prefabs, you're going to create a level prefabs folder and simply drag the ground. So this is the ground that I have created as a prefab, which is basically our ground that we are using from the very start with a simple box collider that is not a trigger and the scale is one for the x.3 on the y. So what I did or how I create the levels is that I like to create an empty game object and call it level holder or level or however you want to call it. Usually in my games what I do is I call it based on the level name. So for example level one then level two then level three because what I do in my games that have multiple levels I create the levels as prefabs and the whole game happens in one scene. Of course, you don't see that on your mobile device or the device you're playing your game because, you know, you, you cannot, but this is how it looks like behind the scenes. And inside of it, I put, for example, another game object, call it the ground holder. And then over here, I start to add the ground. So the first ground is going to go over here. Then I simply duplicate it and move it over here in order to snap it. To, so to snap one game object on the other, hold the V key. And then you will see how this arrow is moving. If you hold the V key like this, depending on where your mouse is, it will move at those places. So holding the V key, I can simply snap it here on the other ground and then I can duplicate these two and then I can move them over here and there you go. And then I can duplicate all of these and then move them over here and so on and so forth. You get the point and you create a level, you know, up to this length over here, for example. I have a complete level that I will show you soon, but I'm just showing you how you can create this level. Now I also have the background holder, so I'm going to right click here, create an empty, and this one is going to be the BG holder or the background holder, however you want to call it. So for this one, I go here inside of the sprites and BG sprites and simply drag the background. And this is how I create it, duplicate it, move it here down like that. And then I simply put them together or snap them, then duplicate these two and then snap them over here and then duplicate two more and then snap them over here. Actually, not these two, but let me just see which two I'm going to. So this one and this one, I believe, is it? So this one and this one over here, basically these two, there you go. And then I snap them. And after that, I simply duplicate all of these and then snap them and so on and so forth. There you go. And I snap them until I have a complete background covering my whole level like that. Now, what you are also going to do, since we're not going to look any down, so we're not going to go down, you can also move the backgrounds like this. That can also work. When I say down, I mean the camera will not go below this point that you currently see. So it will not go below it. Also make sure that you select all of these backgrounds and set their order in layer at minus five because everything else is going to be rendered on top of the background. So for example, our grounds, they're going to be rendered on top of the backgrounds. We don't want them to be like this, you see? Now they're not visible. So we want them to be rendered on top of our, on top of the background. I'm saying this because we're also going to have platforms and we're going to have walls and over here and so on and so forth and over here <laughs> and so on and so forth. And that is the reason why. So this is when it comes to these two. So the ground and the background. So next I'm going to create another empty game object, call it the platform holder. And for the platform, I simply use the ground itself. So again, from the prefabs, level prefabs, I drag and drop the ground. You can rename it, for example, platform or something like that. You don't have to apply this change to the prefab. So plat form there you go don't make don't go over here and apply that change to the prefab just use it as is and then of course you can resize it so i can you know set it to be this size and place it over here and then another platform over here basically you have freedom how you can create a game so that's up to you then you can place another platform here for example after that and resize that platform like that, then duplicate it and then pla 
place another one over here and so on and so forth, you get the point. What if I tell you that I have more tutorials with better explanations and a more comprehensive guide to game development than this one? Sounds interesting? Well, that's my Game Development Academy. It has more than 80 courses, more than 500 hours of content for you to learn Unreal Engine, Unity, and a bunch of other cool stuff game dev related. So click the link down below and check it out. Inside my academy, I create more than 200 games for you to learn how to create all of those games. Click the link down below and check it out. So as I said, you have a total freedom how you want to create these levels. That is totally up to you. What's important to note is that over here, you are going to create the wall holder. And the wall holder is again going to have the ground as the wall. But for the wall, I'm going to do one important thing. So one wall is going to be over here. I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees or actually, excuse me, 90 degrees. So one wall is going to be over here. You're going to make sure that this wall is rendered behind the ground. So over here, the order in layer is going to be minus one. So now it is rendered behind. You see this one is in front, this one is behind. And you can move it something like this and then duplicate it and move it over here. So this is how the wall is going to cover everything. It's not going to allow the player to go outside of these bounds. That's why we are using the wall. Now also what I want to point out is for the wall, you can rename it from ground to wall and over here also wall. But we are going to remove the layer ground from them and set them back on the default there. And of course this is still the ground prefab. So don't go over here and hit apply all to make these changes to the original prefab. Don't do that. Of course you can create another game object that will represent the wall but why bother? No need for this particular example. Maybe for your example, later on when you create your own game, I don't know, one year from now, a gazillion years from now, if maybe our body is put in some kind of robot and one million years from now you're alive, creating a game, you get the point. So do that, make sure that they don't have the ground layer and also duplicate them and at the bottom or basically at the end of the level what you're going to do well i'm going to delete this wall and for this wall you're going to leave a little bit a gap over here and then you can simply resize it like this with the scale and there you go so leaving this gap over here is where the door is going to be so that's why i leave the gap for the wall and there you go and after that the only thing that is left is to place the obstacles and for that you're going to go into the prefabs and enemy prefabs so for example over here you can place the spider shooter but of course before you do that you're going to go here and create an empty game object call it enemy holder and then over here place the spider shooter there you go this one goes over here this one goes over here that is up to you again you have total freedom you can take the walker and this is the walker from The Walking Dead. And you can place him over here, for example, and set the walking distance value. So depending on what you want to do, if you want him to walk on the prefab and use the ground check, you can do that as well. We covered everything. So this is just placing these elements inside of our level. And that's all there is to it. You can also take the jumper and let me place him over here. So in between the platforms where we need to jump over. So the jumper will try to catch us when we do that. You can also use ray casting for the jumper to detect when the player is above him and try to jump, but that will make the game more difficult. It will not allow the player to jump over him. It will be very difficult for him to do that and so on and so forth. So there you go. This is for this one. Next, we also have over here the obstacle prefab. So over here, we can go and right click and we can create the obstacle holder. And then you simply start to put the spikes where you want them to be. Make sure that this spike one is set to be a trigger. So this bad boy needs to be a trigger. You can place one here. You can place one here. You can place the spike two, for example, over here, which is the you know spike that will fall down. So you can place it over here. You can place the spike three wherever you want. One can be over here. This is totally up to you. So this is just a model of a simple level you see over here and I'm going to show you the level that I have created. So this is the level that I'm going to use for this example. There you go. Look at that. So you see the level. This is the wall over here. Look at that. So this goes platform over here. This goes here. This goes here. Platform, platform, platform. I have the solves. I also forgot to show you, but basically you can do that on your own. Just place the saw where you want them to be. You can also set the 
two points where the saw is going to move. So you see for this particular saw over here, it's going to move between this point and this point like this, left and right. But for this saw, it is going to move from this point over here to this point over here, like this, from here to here, from here to here. Also these saws over here, look at that. So all of them are going to move like here and here and here and here. If I hit the play button, let me just show you how all of that looks like. So if go here in the scene, look at that. So you see, I have the spikes, I have the, you know, shooting spiders, the jumper, the spikes over here, the walkers, look at that. And over here you see the solves. Some of them are moving on the platforms, others are moving here, you see that. And here at the end or at the end, we have the, we have the place where the door is going to go. And basically that is that. The only thing that I can do over here is I can take the backgrounds and position them a little bit up which is what I told you to do, but I didn't do it. <laughs> I'm a teacher like that, a sleazy one. Anyways, if something is not clear here, make sure to ask in the comment down below, but basically this is all there is to it. We just place everything that we created so far in this mini course or, well, not mini course, this is a large course. People charge money for stuff like this, but yeah. Anyways, everything that we have created so far, just go and place them in the level. You have total freedom. If you want to use my model, download the project. It's in the same place where you downloaded the assets on my website. After you register once, you don't have to register ever again. And then just go back on learn.awesometudes.com and then find the tutorial assets, locate the lecture. Basically they are sorted as lectures. So locate where this lecture is for this particular mini course and then download the project and you can just copy my level or export the prefab, whatever you want to do, you can do it or surprise me, create something on your own. I am satisfied with this one. So over here, this is what I'm going to use. And of course, starting from the next video, we are going to code a little bit more, add the camera follow, add the collectible items and slowly start to wrap up our game. So I will see you guys in the next video.